Candemonium, located at Hershey Park in Hershey, Pennsylvania, is the brand new B&M Hypercoaster of 2020. And let me just tell you guys, this is one fantastic ride. But is it the best B&M Hypercoaster? That's what I will be discussing in this video. So, first off, I just want to say that Hershey Park did amazing, an amazing job with this new expansion. It's absolutely insane how much cooler the entrance is. I never thought they had a bad entrance, but it is so much better, the entrance. So, it's just insane. But now, talking about Candemonium, the ride itself. This is probably my second favorite B&M Hyper. I've not ridden Shambhala, but I have ridden Mako. And it's not as good as Mako, but it's a lot better than some of the other hyper coasters I've ridden. Like Intimidator, at Carowinds, um, Nitro, and um, Apollo's Chariot. But this is more, this is probably top tier. This ride is more unique than most B&M Hypers. It has a standard out and back layout, but then in the end, it really shines in the end with the helix right around the Kisses Fountain. I really like what they did there. I think it's really, really cool. So, Hershey Park as a whole is really underrated, and I think this coaster is also underrated. Like, think about all the great rides at Hershey Park. Storm Runner, Fahrenheit. Lightning Racer, Great Bear, they're all really underrated rides, and this one is underrated too. So this will be my full in-depth review, so I'm going to start breaking this ride down. So you walk into Hershey Park, and this will be the first ride you see. As I said before, it is new for 2020, so this ride will get a really long line, like midday. I've seen it like 150 minute waits. So, just note that one going. I had a preview because of my hotel, and it, like, I get an hour earlier than everybody else, so I rode this three times on that little preview I had. I definitely recommend staying on site because you do get that, and it really helps. So, this coaster is just beautiful. You walk in, and you just see how beautiful this coaster is. This is probably one of the most beautiful coasters in the world. It doesn't have great theming. But it is probably one of the most beautiful. So you walk in. You go around the Kisses Fountain and get to your entrance. And I just want to say this this entrance sign is absolutely huge. It's so much bigger than it looks in a, a picture. It's huge. So is the station. I really like the station too. It's like huge. It's ginormous. So you enter your queue. I never had to wait longer than... 15 20 minutes for this ride. I also had a fast track one of my days at Hershey, so I didn't really have to wait in long lines for this ride. But you go up your staircase, or the queue actually does have some theming, it's themed the candy a little bit, and I actually do really like what they did there. But then you go up your staircase, and there's some cool lights and a little bit of theming, and then you get to the station where there is a little bit, not a lot, but there is. A little bit of theming so usually the ride ops let you choose your row but sometimes they don't so personally it's not that much of a big deal but I still don't like it because it can vastly improve your ride like front row and back row are two entirely different experiences than if you get the middle personally I like this ride more in the front row and that's because I just feel like the air time stronger and the wind in your face is better. But that's just me. Back row is also really good, so make sure to try both. But now you board your train, and there are three trains that you can board. The Kisses, the Reese's, or, or the Twizzlers, which I actually think is really cool. You're like riding across a Hershey bar, I think, because that's why the track's like brownish, black. So that's actually what I think the theme is. But you board, and you start going up your lift hill. The lift hill actually is a lot faster than a lot of B&M Hypercoaster's lift hills. And it also feels steeper, which makes sense because Hershey Park had less room to work with than some of the other um, parks that have hypers. Just something to point out right there. 
So you get to the top of the lift hill and you have some pretty good speed, which I really like. So you drop off and in the back the drop's better, but the front it's still you still get some pretty good air time. But the back is better for the drop. This drop's amazing. It's pretty much like every other BM hyper coaster. Oh it's always a good drop. This actually might be one of the best BM hyper coaster drops because I rode Nitro the other day and it wasn't as good as I remember and the drop just wasn't as good. But it is good. I would consider this coaster isn't floater nor ejector. I'd say flowjector. Somewhere in the middle of the two. So you drop off of that and you go up into your first airtime moment. This is similar to Mako. Pretty much exactly like Mako's airtime hill. It's about a five second airtime hill. It's Personally, I like it better in the front. Just because I feel like the moment going up on that airtime hill is better than the pullover. But it's still a great moment regardless what row you sit in. And then you come down and you go into the picture before going into the turnaround. So this turnaround is like every other turnaround on OBM Hyper. Provides some good G's, not great, nothing fantastic. This ride isn't supposed to be an intense ride, it's supposed to be focused on airtime. So you go up into a camelback. This one does have a trim on it. It's not as strong as the first one, but it's still a really good moment. And here's where Candemonium really shines. The second half that I consider from here on, this is where it gets really good. So you go into your speed hill. This is also found on Mako, and for whatever reason, I like this speed hill better than Mako's. I just find it to provide more airtime and more sustained airtime. It is a really good moment. Just because it's small, don't overlook it. It has some really good air. And then you go into your helix. This helix, it's good. I almost grayed out, not exactly. I know people say you gray out, right? you don't really gray out, but you come close to graying out. Which was actually odd because I thought I was going to gray out because most of the time I gray out more because of the mask and I'm more dehydrated. But I didn't gray out on it. It's very intense though. So you go through your helix and you go into an outer bank turn. This is actually really good. It's not whippy like an RMC or anything. But it's still a really good element that nobody really talks about that much. It whips you to the side and then whips you back. It provides good airtime, not great. It's more peaceful than an RMC, I'd say. But it's still a good moment. So you drop off of that and you go into another camelback. But the thing about this one that I hate, it has a trim. And this trim really kills. This is one of the main reasons why I prefer this in the front row than the back. Because in the front you can't feel it as much, but in the back you feel all the air time that you just lost. So that just really sucks. If that trim wasn't there, it would be going so much faster. But it's still good. So you drop off your camel back and you go into your helix. The final helix of the ride. And this is really good. It wraps right around the Kisses Fountain. And this is probably my favorite moment of the ride. Yes, this is my favorite moment when all the other moments are fantastic. This is my favorite moment. That is because the Kisses Fountain is so cool. It's just like memorizing to watch it. Watch as you go around the whole fountain. It's really cool to see from the train and from the ground. I always keep my eye right on the fountain, and it's really cool. But after you finish through your helix, you pop up into one more little airtime hill, and then you go go into the brake run. It's not; it's more like Sky Rush's brake run, where it has like two brake runs. So then you go into that, and you drop down into your final brake run, which brings you back into the station. But all in all, this ride is fantastic. It's a phenomenal new addition and it easily makes my top 25. I'm just going to say that there. So when I have my top 25 out, you can expect this ride to be on it. But what should I give it for a score? I think I'm going to be giving it a 9 for its final score. 
This is because it could be a little bit longer. Maybe, uh, maybe a turnaround in there. But it's still a really good ride. It's still one of the best b and Hypers. And it's still a fantastic new addition that Hershey Park added. I absolutely love this thing and I can't wait to get back to Hershey Park to ride it again. Hopefully it's on another six years before I'm back. But the whole Chocolate Town area is really, really cool. And I really, really like it. So I think that'll do it for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.